You know, I haven't been on here in a week to do a Monday Night Raw review, and fucking shit did it feel good not to talk about this fucking show. I could have easily come on here tonight with my voice being the way that it is because of Saturday's great House of Glory show that I commentated with Mr. Matthew Ryan Shapiro. I could easily have... Kevin Dunn, who's sitting in the corner by himself, hosts this show tonight, and I could make a fucking complete joke of what we've seen tonight, but my lack of tweets, my lack of passion, my lack of care for this show mean more than anything than you guys will ever know, man. The fact that I am silent during this show should speak volumes to everybody that appreciates what I do here. Monday Night Raw is in a very, very, very dark stage right now, and they have been for the last four or five years, probably even longer than that. And if you don't see that, you people need to open your fucking eyes and realize that Monday Night Raw is the worst television show that you watch during your weeks. It really is. This show is a downright embarrassment to professional wrestling. And I am not afraid to admit that. I'm the biggest WWE mark that there is on here. This show fucking sucks cock. And I fucking hate it. I don't know what needs to be done. I don't know... Who needs to be fucking terminated? Something needs to change about this show, man. Something needs to change about this show. There's no... You can watch this show, and as a non-wrestling fan, you can pinpoint three things. Number one, the production of this show is fucking garbage. There's no passion in anything that they do. And the fans who pay money to see this shit, they don't give anything back. At all. They sit there on their fucking hands, in their seats, with their $12 Budweiser, and they don't make a goddamn fucking noise in that arena. Why go to these shows? I don't give a shit what you got going on. I don't give a shit who's in the Stanley Cup Finals. I don't give a shit how many titles LeBron James is going for. I don't give a fuck how many helmets Br Bryce Harper is throwing at somebody that widely misses... Good thing he's not a fucking MLB pitcher. I don't give a fuck what's going on. Anywhere. This is WWE. This is your company that you build towards every single month. It's called a pay-per-view. If you're not building with passion to these shows, what does that mean to me about how you think and how you envision your show? Garbage. Absolutely downright fucking pathetic garbage is Monday Night Raw. And it all stems from what you see here tonight. This show was fucking horrendous. Horrendous. When you have... When you have Goldust... When was Goldust last prominent? 1996, 1997? When you have Goldust... Goldust. 20 years of Goldust has passed since he's seen any type of relevancy. When you have gold dust on Monday Night Raw in 2017 be the most entertaining thing on this show, you don't find that to be a goddamn problem. Everything else that happened on this show meant absolutely nothing to me. When you have Corey Graves, who's not an even who's not even an in-ring performer, intertwined with an angle that has absolutely nothing to do with what happened in that ring tonight. You don't find that to be an issue? You're building towards a fatal five-way and the winner's challenging Brock Lesnar for your brand's biggest title. And you have Enzo and Cass mixed in with Kurt Angle and Corey Graves in this storyline and it's posing and giving us more intrigue than anything you have going on with a fatal five-way match that, according to you, is going to change the foundations of the new era. I 
I don't know, man. I don't know. Nobody's going to come on here. Or they might. I don't know. I know I'll listen to Solomonster on Sunday. He'll rip this show to shreds. Right? I know I'll listen to Joe later. He'll rip this show to to shreds. If he's awake. If he's even alive after this show. I have no fucking idea. Stephen Larson. I don't know. I hope they rip into the fucking show. Seriously. Brian Zane. He'll do it in a nice professional way. Hopefully. Everybody else that does what I do on here. Enough sucking the WWE cock. Please. We know nothing is going to change. Our voice, our opinions, our feelings mean nothing. But I don't want to see anybody come on here sugarcoating anything about this show. Oh, but JD, the triple threat match was fucking good. No, it wasn't. What was good about it? You take what those three guys did compared to the triple threat match we've seen with Miz, Balor, and Rollins. Garbage. How could you even compare the two? That actually had feeling and passion behind it. Tonight, it meant nothing. Tonight, I felt nothing. And WWE gave away three-fifths of their main event on Sunday night with a triple threat match. Who cares? Who cares? Then they put Reigns and Rollins in the main event, which granted was the best match of the night. Not taking anything away from Roman Reigns. I know he is very capable as an in-ring performer with WWE. I know this, okay? You guys know how I feel about Roman Reigns. The direction and the character and the fucking... The the, the Roman Reigns dick huggers out there. You all make me fucking physically ill every single goddamn week. The fact that they're pushing this guy and yes, you fucking clowns... Ever since this guy's been made the big dog on Monday Night Raw, where have your ratings gone? To the fucking doghouse. The shithouse. Down the toilet. So don't tell me Roman Reigns is the big dog because the ratings are proven otherwise. You know what Corey Gray's really got on his phone via text, right? He went right to Kurt Angle. Oh, uh, Kurt, the ratings are plummeting. The Stanley Cup Finals are on. Uh, we're, we're taking a beating tonight. That's what really was sent to Corey Gray's phone. Nothing about Enzo and Cass. It's the fact that this show was complete garbage. Either that, or he got up from his seat and excused himself because he even knew the show was fucking garbage. I would do the same. I don't know how they could sit there and call this shit for three hours and actually sound excited. If I have to be that fucking forced to sound excited with this show, I don't want that job. I don't give a fuck how much they're paying you. Speaking of Reigns and Rollins, it was a great it was a great match. Much better than the match they had last year at Money in the Bank. They have great chemistry in the ring. But why would I care? Why do I care? What is in it for me? Why am I supposed to care about Rollins and Reigns? It means nothing to me. Nothing. You put on a great match at the end of the show that I have to sit through for three hours and fucking ten minutes before I even get any type of fucking intrigue with this show. At that point, you are fucking in dreamland. You probably didn't even realize that match even happened on tonight's show. What is with the formula with this show? Why are they so fucking... Just in their own world, afraid to change. This is a go-home show, and you're starting the show with Ms. TV? Ms. TV, you have extreme rules in one week. And your main thing to start the show off with is Ms. TV. This is what you got planned. This is your brilliant idea, right? This is the way you start Monday Night Raw. The Miz, who's on SmackDown, rebuilt his career because Monday Night Raw ruined his career. He did nothing but Miz TV before the draft. Now, ever since he's been back on Raw, since this shakeup, he's done nothing but Miz TV. I mean, I don't get it. 
How to derail a guy's momentum. Send him to Monday Night Raw. And then you start to show off with what I said, Miz TV, which leads to nothing but a six-man tag. So you got Sheamus and Cesaro and the Miz on Miz TV. Dean Ambrose comes out. Oh, I wonder who his fucking partners are going to be. You could have spared me 20 minutes and just say, you know what? We got a six-man tag coming up. We got the tag team champions going up against their challengers. And we got the Intercontinental Champion going up against his challenger. All tonight. That's it. Miss TV. Blah, blah, blah. I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. We got a tag team championship steel cage. We got an Intercontinental Champion that is absolutely fucking garbage. And the Miz, who to me, is falling right back to where he was a year ago. Yeah, really great job there on opening the show. I looked at my brother tonight, I'm like, what is with this, this fucking rigorous bullshit that they do to start this show? Can't you do anything different? Can't you start the show with a fucking 20-minute barn burner? That's when the crowd is the hottest. You're going to have them sit there through three hours and give them the best match at the end of the night when everybody's fucking half dead. Switch it up. It is okay to change the formula. Miz TV. And then we get some weeks, we get Wrestler A and Wrestler B. And then we got Wrestler C coming out with his theme. And fucking Wrestler D coming out with his theme. And we got some fucking bullshit going on. Here comes the GM. He makes a fucking tag team match. Why don't you start the fucking show with the Enzo and Kaz beat down? Or Enzo being attacked? Why don't you start the show with a fucking match that's really going to get your blood boiling and excited for this show? I hate when people just blindly... This is why I hate big corporations. You know, you see all these fucking people on Twitter... Oh, Raw was good. Right? Now, nobody has anything bad to say about the show because they're in the position that they're in or they work directly with WWE or they're affiliated in some way with WWE. As a fan, how could you be pleased with what we've seen tonight? Don't even get me started on This Is Your Life by Alexa Bliss. Whoever wrote that segment, whoever let that go, should be absolutely fucking released from their position. Seriously. This is how you build a women's championship match. It's bad enough we have a fucking kendo stick on a pole match. This is how you're building interest in the viewer for a women's championship match. This is your life. I don't give a fuck about Bailey's life. I want Bailey's character to actually grow some fucking balls. I don't want to hear from her fucking teacher. I don't want to hear from her ex-best friend. I don't want to hear from her fucking ex-boyfriend. What was Bailey like? Why did you take Bailey out on a first date? What made you so interested in Bailey? Before he even opened his fucking mouth, he said, oh, Bailey was a nice girl. I thought he was going to say, no, you know why I took Bailey out? She's got a nice fucking ass. That's why I took Bailey out. That would have made the entire segment right there. Grow balls. Oh, she's a nice girl. This is why Bailey's character's failing on Monday Night Raw. Because she's a nice fucking girl. Cry, cry, cry. Alexa Bliss is bullying me. She's hit me with a kendo stick three weeks in a row. I can't win my title back. Where's the Alexa, where, where's the Bailey that we seen when she was going up against Sasha Banks, right? Where's that Bailey? The Bailey that had fucking anger in her face. The Bailey that had enough of Sasha bullying her fans. And just anger built in within that Sasha had her title. Where, where's, where's this Bailey? This is how you ruin a fucking character on Monday Night Raw. By doing shit like that. Seriously. 
And yes, Corey Graves, we know Alexa Bliss handles a kendo stick very well. I don't need to put a kendo stick on a fucking pole to know that Alexa Bliss handles a kendo stick. I got one right here. She can handle it anytime she wants. You don't need to put it on a fucking pole. Then on top of that, the fucking crowd chanting delete during the segment. Huge delete chance during this fucking segment. If you're Vince McMahon and you're in a gorilla position looking at this and you're hearing delete chance, what are you what is going through your head? How do you look at how do you look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the night and be okay with the show that you put on? I don't I don't understand it. I, I just don't get it. I don't believe what the, this was this was a go home show. How many of you are excited for extreme rules? I guarantee you, it's a whopping zero. Zero interest for Extreme Rules. And you wanted a Monday Night Raw. JD, we miss your Monday Night Raw reviews. You're getting one, motherfucker, tonight. Complete garbage. Absolutely fucking garbage. Miz TV opened the fucking show. It led to nothing but a six-man tag. Do I even need to go over what happened there? Of course not, because you don't care. You don't care. Sheamus, cry, cry, cry. The fans don't treat us well. It's all a nostalgia act. They like the Hardys, blah, blah, blah. All the same shit, right? And let me tell you something about, let me tell you something about Dean Ambrose and this fucking, oh, uh, Dean Ambrose is going to lose the, the Intercontinental Championship on a disqualification technicality, okay? This is how clueless WWE is, okay? So you mean to tell me that WWE officials and the higher-ups who run Monday Night Raw are okay with any type of disqualification for Dean Ambrose to lose his title? They don't elaborate on the fucking ruling of this match. Do you know how fucking stupid they are? Now, I'm not, I'm not working for WWE. I am in the business. I talk about it. I work with House of Glory. But I'm no fucking dummy when it comes to logic. So you mean to tell me this slipped right on in to the fucking ruling of this match on Sunday night? So you mean to tell me Maurice can automatically hit Dean Ambrose and award The Miz the Intercontinental Championship. Just like that. Just easy like that, right? I'm supposed to overlook that technicality. Instead of WWE coming out and saying, you know what, maybe we should tweak this and make it seem like it makes sense. We'll, we'll just reword it or, you know, rewrite it a different way. Dean Ambrose needs to get himself disqualified for him to lose the match. So... Maurice can fucking cause him to lose the title. You know, someone in the crowd can cause him the title. I mean, I don't understand the logic there. They didn't explain that. That just slipped right into the ruling. And Ambrose is fucking awful. I don't give a fuck who's out there about Ambrose. This guy is garbage. Completely fucking garbage. Is there anyone more boring than Dean Ambrose? I mean, if they're not doing anything with the Shield... If there's a guy that needs to go rogue or heal, it's this guy. His shtick is fucking cringe. Absolutely cringe. The guy is not funny. The guy's moveset is just fucking boring. His springboard clothesline is one of the worst fucking moves in all of WWE. Stop. Stop. I hope you lose the title, and I hope they just rework your character to the point where it's actually interesting again, because this guy is doing nothing at all for anybody. Trash. Now, the Hardys, on the other hand, this match, sloppy as fuck. Hardys get another victory over Sheamus and Cesaro, which means to me that the Hardys are not going broken. I would be shocked if they do. But I know that they will be losing the titles because they have gotten the upper hand over Sheamus and Cesaro every single time. They are not doing it again. And with the steel cage stipulation, it gives them the easy out to lose this match. I don't see the Hardys retaining the title. I think it's going right back to Sheamus and Cesaro on Sunday night. That's that. 
That's that. Elias Samson versus a jobber, Zach Evans. This one went three minutes. It should have went three seconds. I don't know what the fuck they were doing here, but Elias Samson, he should have just showed off a few moves, do his big neck breaker finisher, and that was it. Three minutes against Zach Evans. You mean to tell me Elias Samson can't beat this guy in 30 seconds? What was the three minutes for? I know how good Elias Samson is. I know how good he can be, but I didn't need him to go three minutes with Zach Evans to know that. Give me a break, WWE. Enough of these fucking jobber matches. If you're not going to do them right, don't do them at all. Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt on the fucking Titan Tron. Oh, I'm, I'm the face of fear. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Typical bullshit from Bray Wyatt. Words that go in one ear and out the other. Thinking this guy is uh, going to beat Brock Lesnar. Are you fucking kidding me? And then of all people, Finn Balor. People, oh, I want to see Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar. If Finn Balor can't beat Samoa Joe and Bray Wyatt, what makes you think he's going to fucking stand toe-to-toe with, with Brock Lesnar? Are you out of your fucking mind? Just based on the logic of what they put Finn Balor through tonight, you think this guy's going to stand the chance against Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar can eat all three of these guys in the same night. No, but I'm supposed to believe Finn Balor's going to go one-on-one with, with uh, the Beast Incarnate, right? Give me a fucking break. And what is with the triple threat matches lately, man? You know, nobody seemed to care about this match at all. At all. Samoa Joe wins. You know, in the same way everybody else has won triple threat matches. Oh, one guy, Wrestler A, does his finisher. Wrestler B on the outside sneaks in, takes Wrestler A, throws him out of the ring, and then he pins the opponent because the finishing move was applied. And who'd they pin? They pin Bray Wyatt. Of all fucking people, they pin Bray Wyatt. Yeah, all that fucking talk about run. Run to what? What am I running to, Wyatt? Another loss? Yeah, okay. Yeah, run towards Brock Lesnar. Let me see you fucking strike fear in Brock Lesnar. He'll fucking laugh at you, use you as your toothpick, and then fucking break you in half. And then laugh on his way to the fucking bank. Give me a break. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. 17 minutes. Good match. Meant nothing to me. Three-fifths of the main event on Sunday night happened right in front of your eyes. What, what else is gonna happen? They're going to add a kendo stick, a chair, a table. What's going to happen? Right? Whatever. Garbage. Can't take this shit, man. Nothing makes sense to me anymore. Nothing. No M. Dar with Alicia Fox versus Rich Swan, who got zero reaction. He got reaction because Sasha Banks was with him. Oh, yeah, great. Sasha Banks now. Look at her. She's, she's down to 205 Live level now. 205 Live. You listen to Solomon on Sunday's podcast. 205 Live didn't even break the top 20 on WWE Network for uh, shows of the week. WCW had, I don't know what year it was, but uh, a certain Halloween Havoc beat out 205 Live as one of the top shows this week. It broke the top 20. 205 Live didn't even break the top 20. If that doesn't tell you that this show is a failure, I don't know what is. Take it off for the fucking Tuesday night SmackDown garbage. Put it on fucking WWE Network as an exclusive th- for that only. Put it in front of Full Sail and make it live for an hour. Please. Nobody in fucking uh, Hillbilly, Alabama or fucking uh, in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee is going to give a shit about a Rich Swan or a Noam Dar or a Jack Gallagher. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Billy Joe Bob is going to fucking uh, worry about a Jack Gallagher, right? He never even fucking seen anybody with that type of skin color in his entire life. He's going to give a fuck about Jack Gallagher? Are you out of your fucking mind? You're going to put these guys in front of a SmackDown crowd that don't give a fuck about you and just make it like a typical WWE. You know what 205 Live is? It's, it's as bad as main event. That's what it is. It's main event... On the WWE Network. That's all it is. Nobody gives a shit. It doesn't stand out. It doesn't have its own identity. I don't give a shit how talented these guys are. You're putting them in front of people that don't give a fuck. Why did the fucking Cruiserweight Classic succeed so well and above everybody's expectations? It's because it was in front of the smaller crowd, which was more intimate and more into the in-ring action. With no fucking storyline bullshit behind it. I don't give a fuck that Noam Dar is dating Alicia Fox and that 
Rich and uh, Sasha Banks needs to get back at Alicia Fox for whatever fucking reason, and she hires Rich Swan to be her partner for Extreme Rules. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? You're putting these guys in typical Raw storylines, and you're taking away the entire fucking the special aspect that made them so great to begin with last summer. Yeah, how can we ruin the Cruiserweight Classic after it's over? Oh, that's right. Book it like it's Monday Night Raw. And you want to know why it didn't break the top fucking 20? Give me a fucking break. Take it off of Raw. Take it away from fucking Tuesday nights and put it on the network after NXT. Live. In full sale. Fucking ridiculous. Kalisto versus Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil wins by hooking the tights. Oh my god. The much larger Titus O'Neil needs to cheat against the 150 pound Kalisto. Are you fucking kidding me? Seriously. And then they take selfies, he and Apollo Crews. They're gonna go out drinking. Such a big win over Kalisto. Go back to fucking catering and make sure my sweet potatoes are fucking hot. Please. Get the fuck off my television. Bailey, this is your life. Let me tell you something about this. Because I went off in the beginning. I'm not mentioning it anymore. It's not even worth my fucking breath. Okay? What made The Rock and Mankind This Is Your Life so fucking special? It's because they were both in the ring at the same time going over everything. They, they're like, oh, how could we make this good and creative? Oh, that's right. Let's copy something we did fucking 17 years ago. You know, Alexa Bliss is out there interviewing her teacher and her ex-best friend and her ex-boyfriend and then the ex-boyfriend's making out with the ex-best friend. At no point, at no point as this was going on, Bailey didn't have any intuition to come down and put a stop to the embarrassment. She just waited till it was all over and then came out. So the teacher made fun of her, the best friend made fun of her, and then the ex-boyfriend made fun of her. And then to add insult to injury, the ex-boyfriend was like, oh, I didn't like Bailey's nice ass. I always wanted you, ex-best friend. And they start making out. At no point did Bailey say enough is enough. I would have had enough is enough after I seen fucking Sunshine Bear on the goddamn fucking table. They made Bailey into a sniveling fucking pussy. Girl next door? I usually think the girl next door is hot. In this case, the girl next door is fucking pathetic. Nobody would want to date Bailey the way they're booking her on Raw. I can't stand to look at her anymore. Whoever wrote that segment should be fired. No question. Austin Aries and Jack Gallagher versus TJP and Neville. It went 13 minutes. Do you care? I don't. I don't. It's going to be a great match. Probably the match of the fucking night. Submission match with Neville and Austin Aries. Champion taps out. Neville taps out to the last chancery. Okay? So, there you go. Neville's doomed. You think he's going to beat Austin Aries again? Three pay-per-views in a row? Fuck no. His title reigns over on Sunday night. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Great match. Main event was great. Probably the best match that these two put on. They got great chemistry. Roman Reigns wins clean. Raw. Roman always wins. I told you. Now let's dissect this before I get the fuck out of here because I'm fucking sick to my stomach over this goddamn show. Okay? Joe won the triple threat match. That automatically X's him out from winning the fucking Fatal 5-Way. Joe is not winning the Fatal 5-Way. Okay? Bray Wyatt? Forget about it. He's got a better fucking chance of hitting the Powerball than winning that fucking match on Sunday night. Fuck him. Okay? Roman Reigns... To me, he's the clear-cut winner. I would go with that because, in my way of thinking, get the inevitability out of the way. You want him to be world champion? You want to put him against Lesnar? Do it now. Get it out of the way. Okay? But I don't think they're going to do that because Roman, you know, all the fucking, uh, the dick-huggers of Roman, oh, we got to book him for WrestleMania. So they're probably, they're probably still fucking having wet dreams over the fact that Lesnar and Reigns are going to main event WrestleMania in New Orleans. So right now, I'm taking Reigns out of the equation. So that leaves Balor and Rollins. Balor? Do I see Balor and Lesnar? Fuck no. 
maybe the fucking regular goon out there sees Balor and Lesnar as a intriguing match, but not me. Not me at all. I'd give it to Seth Rollins because, you know, out of everything that this show is for the last fucking two months since WrestleMania, there's one man on this roster who has been above everybody as far as what he's done as what he's done in the ring, and that's Seth Rollins. And just based off that fact, I would have Seth Rollins win this fatal five way on Sunday, reward him for his good work, and just being a fucking beast after nearly missing WrestleMania, and put him against Lesnar. Put him against Lesnar. And then have Balor be so upset that he fucks Rollins out of the championship. We get a triple threat at SummerSlam with Rollins, Balor, and Lesnar. That's a little bit more believable than putting a Balor against a Lesnar. At least I could see Balor in there with Rollins and Lesnar. It would be a little bit more intriguing. Braun Strowman's going to be back. Him and Roman have unfinished business. That's probably going to be some type of stipulation match, right? We're probably going to get an ambulance match at some point. They're going to blow off that feud. And then Bray Wyatt and Samoa Joe can feud. They've been going back and forth. Oddly, that'd be a nice feud. Whatever the case may be, man. I don't think Finn Balor's going to win the Fatal Five Way. I think it's going to Rollins. That's my pick. I would have Reigns do it. I would have Reigns win. I'd have Reigns win the title. Because I've said, I've said it for fucking months. I've said it for months on this channel. Why do Reigns and Lesnar and handcuff that title all year till WrestleMania? When you can give Reigns the title now because that's what's going to happen anyway. And instead of that, book Reigns versus Balor at WrestleMania. I've been saying it for months. They have great chemistry in the ring. They gave us a great match a couple of weeks ago. And that'd be a, a crowning moment for Finn Balor after missing WrestleMania this year due to injury. Have him win the title back then against the villain Roman Reigns. It's not that difficult, people. It's not that dip difficult, but WWE clearly is going to do what is the worst situation here, and we're all going to be displeased with what they do anyway. So it's uh, rinse and repeat here with WWE. Garbage, garbage, garbage. We bitch and complain. They give us more garbage, 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 and we continue to watch anyway. That's your Monday Night Raw review. This show was absolutely fucking awful. And no... Enzo was not attacked by Big Cass at all. If you think Cass now is attacking Enzo, why? After they just broke up Goldust and R-Truth. Doesn't make any sense. The Revival's not going to be back for another three weeks. This is a way to build up the Revival and get heat back on them by attacking the overly babyface Enzo and Cass. Makes sense. One thing that makes sense here, how do you bring back a team that really nobody is familiar with right now, being that they got promoted from NXT? Oh, that's right, we'll have them attack the most over team in the division. There you go, it makes sense. It's not Cass attacking Enzo, not yet. Cass obviously is going to be on his own eventually, but not right now. Not right now at all. I think it's the revival. And you know what? When Cass was in the backstage segment with Enzo, I never seen him more free with his, uh, with his um, promo. He sounds normally very scripted. He sounded very natural there. Why don't we see that big cast more often? Again, scripted trash. And please, if you're going to be pushing Goldust as something important on this show, give him the blonde wig. Give him the gold robe with the fucking feathers around the neck, please. Give me something of the 96-esque Goldust. You know, the whole fucking thing and the fucking the homosexual acts. Please, something. If you got Patrick Clark on NXT fucking rubbing himself and blowing kisses on NXT, you can have Goldust doing the same thing. You don't have to have him making out with Ahmed Johnson like he did back in the day, okay? You don't have to have him feeling off Razor Ramon during an Intercontinental Championship match. Give me risque. It's okay to push the envelope a little bit because this show desperately needs something going for it because right now it is the worst show on television, bar none. And this was a go-home show. Absolutely no one is excited for what's happening at Extreme Rules. Nobody. Nobody. This show was trash. Raw is in the dumps. And changes need to be made immediately. That's all I got to say about that. That's your Monday Night Raw review. If you don't like the review, kiss my ass. 35 minutes. That's all this show's getting. I'm not doing any more. If you guys enjoyed the review, smash that thumbs up. Because it's certainly appreciated. Subscribe down below. Hit that bell for the notification. Join the Patreon squad. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. And make sure you guys 
Check out my sponsors over at Audible, man. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script for your free audiobook for listening to tonight's show. You guys get over 180,000 choices to choose from. And if you guys sign up with Audible, you're going to get one free book of your choice. And if you guys want to cancel your subscription, you get to keep your audiobook for free, man. Compatible with iPhone and Android. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. Make sure you guys go and check them out. They are a huge part of this very channel, man. So thank you guys so much. I'll be back tomorrow with an off the script extra. Until then, I am JD. This is your Raw Review. Demolish that thumbs up and... I'll see you guys tomorrow for more WWE news and rumors. Until then, take care, make it a great night, and I'll see you all on Tuesday morning.